warm welcome. This is Shobia Clinton inviting you on another episode on CEO TV, A Voice That Matters. On today's show, we have Ramesh Shanmuganathan with us, the CEO of JKH IT. Welcome, Ramesh. It's a pleasure having you on our show today. Thanks, Shobia. Thanks for having me. Tell us, Ramesh, Sri Lanka has a grand aspiration in becoming a regional hub of many sort, similar to Singapore and Dubai. But we have been struggling to achieve that. What are your thoughts in that? Shobi, I think it's an interesting question, but I think many a times I have uh, addressed this. Uh, because if you look at in the 80s, we were probably the, uh, the most sought after country to model after, right? Singapore, Dubai. All of them kind of model after Sri Lanka, the Colombo plan, and, and probably somewhere down the line we missed the bus. Right? I think critical things if you look at today, our aspirations to become a knowledge hub, a transport hub, an education hub. Now we're looking at healthcare uh, with China port coming in. So we are looking at we becoming a hub similar to Singapore or Dubai, right? But then if you really look at the policy perspective, why the, whether it's a macroeconomic, microeconomic, or the investor sentiment. You've got to look at how do you really then attract investors and also in the areas that we are trying to create a critical mass, whether we have that intellectual capacity. So today, we are struggling in terms of many, many aspects because say one is the investment, second thing is the intellectual capital itself. So today, our universities produce about 35,000 graduates a year, right? But if you look at, if you look at Singapore or Dubai, and increasingly Malaysia, Vietnam and all are attracting a lot of expat talent in, right? So I think that is where we also need to liberalize our kind of policies to attract the best of talent and also make it an education cup which will become a feeder in terms of our economic growth aspiration. I think that is where I feel the bigger challenge is, right? We need to attract the best of the talent and also make it an intellectual capital from this part of the continent. There's no point we competing against India. We should differentiate ourselves. Sri Lanka has set its eye on making it big with IT and BPO sector with platform and with an export value of 5 billion US dollars. What do you think we need to like, you know, make it big in IT? So today we are, I think our exports crosses close to about, I think 1.82 billion, right? And we have close to about 180,000 uh, people working in the IT industry. So the, the issue is, if we want to scale it to 5 billion, I don't think, again, we have the supply side of the, uh, the, the human capital from a Sri Lankan context. So I think that is where, I think we have to then look at that aspiration in the light of what is reality and where is that we need to kind of accelerate or kind of uh, liberate uh, our policies so that we create the critical mass. Right? Without that, I am, I'm, I'll be surprised that if we, we, that we would we would achieve that number, and I think we need to maybe encourage private education. Today, most of our education is public, right? And and that is where I think we need to encourage private universities to, to set up. And now, if you look at a lot of the people now today, if you take hundred thousand sit for the A levels, only five thousand or thirty-five thousand gets in to the university. So what happens? The balance more than hundred seventy thousand. So if you have a private education uh, opportunity because only a handful can afford to go overseas and study. So if you can retain that capital and also today we also losing a lot of people to migration. Brain drain is a huge factor. So we have to stem all of these if we really want to hit that number and, and make IT uh, or in the IT to make it big. So that's I would see as a serious challenge that aspiration. Today's innovation seems to be the main to stay relevant and competitive. What's the niche that a Sri Lankan can create for ourselves? Okay. So innovation obviously has become the, the limelight today and, and, and I think post pandemic. Obviously technology has become so pervasive. I think today if you look at uh, most people have become entrepreneurial because of the situation. right? So today if you look at even Uber Eats, there are so many people who are uh, got into the food business, but they don't have a restaurant, right? So the the innovation I feel gets created because of the opportunity and the context, and and you know because you're pushed against the wall. 
from a sri lankan context also then we need to look at if we really want to grow our gdp to the aspired 5000 to 7000 and become a developed country we need to look at what are the growth opportunities that we have from a regional context so that's where i feel today building uh, infrastructures in terms of arc and road alone is not enough tech is also important the in, the info, information highway as well so with that you also see a huge opportunity especially with the current context you can be employing anyone in the world and you could definitely be uh, kind of really creating the intellectual capital which can draw that incentives for multinationals to come and you know really set up things here and special things like r&d right even even the evolving things like data science so that is where we need to have a clear strategy in terms so what is that we want to create as a niche and then have a clear strategy from education in terms of supply chain to make it big in terms of policies now even even if you like port city now so i think that is where i feel if you really want to kind of drive innovation from a sri lankan context we have to look at something which is relevant for today's era there no point copying what people have done in the past decade right there no point we making india or dubai or trying to become another singapore so we got to carve out our niche which we are we would be relevant in the next 10 to 20 years I and mean, that's that's where i feel you know maybe our thought process and the policy framework is lacking to drive that Thank you very much, Ramesh, for being our guest today. It was great having you on our show today. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Until I see you on another interesting episode, me signing off. Shobhya Clinton from COTV, a voice that matters.